Ready to roll, everybody? Yep, let's yeah. do it. Awesome. Welcome to another episode of Hometown Highlights. Today we have a special guest, Bryce Cobb from Anna, Ohio, Anna High School. Um, we do have a post uh, in, in our um, interview questions. You hadn't signed yet, but I just saw last week that you had signed. Where are we, where are we heading, Bryce? I'm heading to Ohio Dominican University. You got to play golf, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. So Bryce is the son of Amy and Brandon Cobb. He's got one sister, Brenna, and another brother, Landon. Uh, Landon's the outdoorsman. Brenna's the athlete, along with Bryce. Um, Landon also plays some sports, too, but he really likes being outdoors. So some of your hobbies, golf, basketball, baseball. Uh, you're part of uh, the Sacred Heart Young Ch Church Group, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, fellow Christian athletes and Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. So you're involved with a, a number of different things. Um, you know, yep. some of your hobbies, obviously, are sports-related, playing or watching, uh, hanging with friends, sleeping. That's fun. Uh, one strength, uh, his work ethic, uh, one of his weaknesses, he's shy and quiet. So we're going we're gonna to get him out of that shy and quiet thing today. Um, and some of his mentors are his parents. Uh, but overall, guidance from God, having faith in God, has given him the strength to wake up each day and try to try to be the best person he can be. Welcome, Bryce. We're we're happy to have you. Uh, my co-host Dom Fry, how are you doing today? Good, good, doing great this morning. Here we are on a Monday morning, eight thirty in the morning. We're ready to roll for the week. So, let's do a couple icebreakers, Bryce. Are you an Apple or an Android user? Apple. Um, I've had Apple. For years now, I've only gone through two phones. Both have been Apple. I really love them. L love those blue text messages, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you an Apple Watch? You got the whole the whole gamut of Apple products? No, no. Just, just, the just the phone. That's it for me. That's enough for you. Okay. Are you a morning or a night person? Uh I consider myself both. I can I can stay out late with friends, and then the next morning I can get up early, go to work, or get up early and do whatever. Yeah, yeah. One last thing: Do you prefer which sport? Do you prefer that you play here? Golf, by far. Golf, Love golf. That's all summer, all fall. That's what I do in my free time. So, so where are you, where's, I'm a, I'm a golfer as well. Very, uh, uh, amateurish. I'm a, about a 10 handicap. So I know you can beat me. You'd have to give me some strokes, but what, what is your handicap at this point? Where are you at? Um, on the mobile app, after putting in some scores, I think my handicap is up to like a 1.9, 1.8 right in there. What's your goal to get to? Scratch. Scratch or yep. I'd say you just go for plus two and be done with it. <laughs> the lower, the lower, the better. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So Dom, you want to go ahead and get us started here? Yeah. So Bryce, let's, uh, so obviously you said that you're an athlete involved in multiple different sports, golf being your main hobby. Let's go back in time to learn the whole story about you. Tell me, you know, what was your first experience with golf or even sports in general? I mean, obviously you mentioned here that you've been playing sports since you were young, but maybe what were, uh, you know, was it your parents getting you involved in sports or what was the initial draw with athletics for you? Yeah, so when I was like six years old, back at our other house, we, uh, my parents got me a first set of golf clubs and it was one of those bags that's got the two legs and it props up. You know, I've never had that before. So trying to figure out how to use that was a, it was a mission. <laughs> but that really sparked my interest. And uh, from there on, I just kept playing. And then a couple of years later, they got me another set and just kept doing that and just kept me interested. And then I, fell in love with the game, you know, start practicing, start getting less and found out I was pretty good. So just kept going and I loved it. 
early on, did your dad go golfing with you a lot? Was it the two of you that would go out uh, golf courses together? Or was it like a family thing that all of you would go? Yeah. Um, me and my dad, we'd go a lot. Us too. You know, we'd gamble a little bit. And then, and then, you know, like a Sunday afternoon when, if none of us were doing anything, uh, we'd go out as a family, have fun, just enjoy the afternoon. Nice. So you said as you were playing along then throughout the years, you know, upgraded clubs and such that your parents got for you. You said after at one point you started to realize you were pretty good at this thing. Take me through that. You know, was that a moment? Was that one time golfing or was it over the course of a summer, over a season? You know, at what point, what was that like once it started to click for you? So, yeah, uh, growing up, you know, I played uh, travel baseball. And I really loved that. I wanted to keep doing that. But then when we got to freshman year, that's when I finally stopped because, you know, I was like, I want golf to be my number one. So freshman year, tried out. Um, you know, I was in the top two all year and didn't do any lessons or anything. Just got through the year with my swing, you know. And then – that winter is when I first started doing lessons with uh, the uh, head professional, his son, out at Shelby Oaks. And uh, that went really well. And then sophomore year came. And you know, it was just another average year. You know, he dropped a couple strokes off the average. And then uh, that next winter, um, that's when we started working a little more, you know, progressing. And then junior year, that's when I really saw it take off. You know, I could, I gained 15 yards just over the winter. Hmm. That was, that was pretty significant. And then my scores dropped and just really excited, you know, to see, the hard work paid off from the winter throughout the fall season. Yeah, it is definitely encouraging. Like you said before, you know, your strength being your work ethic and to see that work ethic, you know, after years and years and years of playing finally pay off for you and seemingly, you know, going into that, that junior year, being able to gain 15 yards over the winter. Um, you know, that's definitely encouraging. Then definitely just a more encouragement for you just to keep, keep practicing, keep working hard, you know, keep improving your game when you're able to see that progress that you're making over the course of time. Yeah. And then like freshman year, a lot of golfers at that age think practice is just go out and play nine holes, go home, call it a day. I was kind of that way. And then as I went through the years, I found out that practice was just more than that nine holes. It's go to the putting green, putt for an hour and a half, chip for an hour, go out, play some holes, come back, putt, chip a little more, you know, just work on the little things. Yeah, golf is a really technical game. Like it's, it's literally a game of centimeters. I mean, if you just miss, miss hit one by just a bit, I mean, the thing can go way left, way right. There, there's so much. If you, you know, if if you pull a putt, you can miss it by six inches. I mean, there's so much that can go wrong. So it's really putting in that time and that practice. So you're comfortable with everything and you're confident in your stroke. And um, yeah, you you obviously have learned that's what it kind of takes. It's not just go out and play some holes and um, expect to be better than your competition because it's just not realistic, is it? Yeah. And yeah. I love hearing you talk about the intricacies, you know, of learning. And that was a learning process for you that it's not just going out nine holes and then going home, that it's those details and really trying to focus on each aspect of your game to improve, obviously your entire golf game. 
So take me through, you said your junior year, then you improved so much, you know, what was your junior year? What did it look like then? You know, what was the main accomplishment or accomplishments that you may have had throughout that year? So at the beginning of the year, uh, my dad, the coach, he has us write down some goals, personal um, and team goals. My personal goals were, you know, get player of the year in the league and then obviously make it to state. Um, I didn't get player of the year, so the next goal was go to state. And that year, that's when I found out what practice was. So I spent a lot of time out at the putting green. And that year I made it to state, you know, uh, first day, I'm tied for third. And on the front nine, I didn't play that well. So it was all that practice definitely helped me for the back nine. And at the turn, I could tell, like, my mental game changed a lot. You know, on the on the front nine, it was, you know, my head was down. And I just wasn't in it. And then I got to the back nine. I think I started off with a birdie on a par five, a number 10. And it was just, it was just a mood swing for me. And I got confident and I started rolling in putts. And I was just, I was a different type of player. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool to hear. And so reading through your notes, you know, you had for us, it kind of made me think of the roles that your parents had specifically in your golf game, that your dad was your coach taught you, I'm sure the intangibles, or excuse me, the tangibles in the game of golf and how to play golf. But your mom, you mentioned, you know, she taught you those intangibles, taught you about having fun, the positive attitude, the confidence, you know, how did that factor in, you know, it, I kind of heard you say that through the, in my head, I was piecing together. You talked about in the back nine, it was almost like those benefits of your mom and the encouragement that she had for you and what she had taught you really benefited in that back nine. So can you tell me a little bit, you know, about that relationship between both of your parents, obviously your dad being your coach and being your father, but then also your mom and the benefit that she had specifically for you with your golf game. So my dad, after um, pretty much every match on the way home or when we got home, we would talk about like what to improve on from that round or that tournament. And we would kind of analyze the round hole by hole, see what I did wrong, see what I did right, see what we need to work on for future. And, you know, that happened a lot. But during the round, uh, mom would follow us, follow me or my brother. And, you know, she's right there. And, uh, you know, if I hit a bad shot, my head was down. And I wasn't happy with myself. I'd look over at her and then she'd be looking at me. She'd tell me, put a smile on my face or uh, keep my head up. You know, there's always the next shot. Mm. and you know she helped me get through rounds even though she wasn't the coach and she wasn't able to interact with me and talk to me so moms are good at yeah <laughs> that's awesome that's cool to hear you say obviously both of your parents playing such an integral role uh you know in your golf game so you said then junior year uh, made it to state. What did this look like? How the last year go for you then your senior year? Yeah, senior year is really started off well. I got off to a hot start in the first two and three weeks. Our season starts off with quite a few 18 hole tournaments. Uh, in the first one, I was at the time I didn't know it, but I was leading for a lot of the tournament and the dude that was in second 
turned out to be in my group that I was playing with. So you know, you get to the last hole, par five, and off the tee, I'm all right. And uh, you know, I lay up to a yardage that I'm comfortable with. And then it just went downhill from there. I end up making a double to uh end up losing by one. Mm-hmm. So that's how the year started. And then after that, I was medalist in every match till the end of the year. And then in like the third 18 hole tournament, I actually ended up breaking the school record on that. It is quite funny, you know, first hole of the day, par five, I started off with an eagle. So I was like, all right, this is going to be a good day. And then, so that was the eighth hole. I parred the ninth. I went to the back nine, shot even, and then got back to the front side. And then I just kind of went off, went on a streak with birdies. And then on a long par three, rolled in like a 40-footer. On a double tier green is as everything was going then. Yeah, it what was around. Like, what is the school record for Anna? Uh, before it was 68. That day I shot 67. Awesome. Mm. And then I also broke my own record for nine hole, which was a 32. And then that day I had a 31. I get 31 after about six holes. <laughs> I won't tell you how few holes it takes me for 31. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible, man. That's awesome shooting. And obviously, you need some things to go right and have a little luck when you roll in putts that are 40 foot on a double tier green, but that it's still awesome. I mean, there's you still got to make the shot, right? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's- I kept uh, – Kept going through, you know, I was medalist in pretty much every match. And then I get it's like three weeks left and I just fell into a slump. Mm. I just kind of lost that confidence and I could really just never get it back. I just wasn't comfortable over putts or over tee shots. And, you know, I get to the district, I get by at sectionals. I get to the district and it wasn't, it wasn't a bad day, but it wasn't a good day. And in the end, I ended up missing it by two shots. They take top two. I was a uh, third. So it wasn't the, the ending that I would have liked, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, just another, lesson that I can learn and use for the future to get better. Hmm. And what did you learn out of that experience? Yeah, I figured out I need to, uh, my course management needs to be better. You know, I hit some shots I probably shouldn't have. Didn't listen to my coach. (laughs) But yeah, and then sometimes some coaches know what they're talking about, don't they? yeah don't miss right you miss right and then you're short-sighted all that kind of stuff yeah like one par five I was wanting to go for it because you know I was just striking the ball so well and I was wanting to go for it and there was a crick all up the left side he's like no just lay up to the front of the green chip on make your putt make birdie well I went for it and I hit it in the crick (laughs) (laughs) whoops yeah like a bogey then yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's that's funny. Hey, uh, talk about that tournament you played down in Florida this year. It's a, uh, what was that course? It's kind of well known. It was a uh, Trump National. So it's got it's got four courses in like that complex or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you start off at a local qualifier. I played 
down in Dayton. I ended up winning that qualifier and then they take the top five. So then we all qualified to go down there and they actually have like all these different suites and they keep you at that resort, which is just really cool because um, everybody's, you know, all together, you can interact with whoever. And then at night they do like little games and stuff. One night they did a uh, glow in the dark putt putt. <laughs> they set up like nine holes on the putting green and you s- kind of found yourself in a group and you went through it, talking with them and getting to know them. So that was pretty cool. And then when it came to the tournament side, you uh, for boys, you had two courses you'd play. Um, uh, I forget their names off the top of my head. But you played those two, and then they took like a top – 75 or 70 or something you went and played in a championship round and then for those who didn't make the cut they did like a little one day tournament you all started from you all started at zero and whatever you shot in those 18 holes that's where you finished and I ended up getting second I was pretty happy with that round, I shot one over 73. And in the other two rounds, I was above 80. Mm. I just couldn't really get it together. And then that last day, I just kind of relaxed, had fun, and played a good round to bring home some hardware. Nice. How many kids were at this? Like, how many boys were competing at this event in Florida? Like, how big of a tournament was it? I think there was, like, 180 boys. Okay. And then, like, uh, 160 girls. So, it was pretty big. And then it, I think there was about 20 different countries that were there. Hmm. So, it was, oh. it was pretty big. Yeah, that's a big tournament. How are the course conditions? Best you've seen? Uh, they were pretty good. They just, you know, it rains every day down there. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's constantly wet. But, you know, the course drained real well. The conditions stayed in good shape. Overall, I loved every course I played. I ended up playing three different ones. It was just phenomenal. Yeah, that's awesome. So you mentioned hardware, Bryce. Obviously, we can see all the hardware that you have behind you, your trophies, your medals. I want you to, if you can pick one and tell us which one that is and why it isn't the most important to you. Maybe not the most important, but one of the most important pieces. (laughs) There's got to be a couple up there. I know that you're like, man, these are, this I have a little bit more uh, joy and pride from. It definitely, uh, these right here, those were from the Optimist uh, qualifier and the one-day tournament down in Florida. Hmm. Uh, Those I'm pretty proud of. Both days I played really well, especially in the qualifier. It was just really tough conditions. And the wind was howling, and they tucked every pin, like three steps onto the green. So it was, it was a tough day. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm proud of all of it. Yeah, hard work shows that, you know, it, it'll get you places. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's just. Let's talk about where it got you. Where, so you signed with Ohio Dominican Play Golf. Yeah. I just settled on Ohio Dominican, Columbus in general. I mean, it's a great school. We used to play them guys when I was in you know, playing college basketball. So talk about, you know, all that hard work and what it, what it has done for you. Yes. Yeah, so this whole recruitment process, we started last December. You know, I was just emailing schools 
and, and through my personal Gmail, and we ended up emailing 30. Uh, we'd get some emails back saying, you know, our recruiting class of 2022 is full and we're not recruiting anymore. So you got to mark those schools off your list. And, you know, like Kentucky State, they showed interest in me right away and stayed in touch with their coach and went down for a couple of visits. You know, everything went well. And then, is it like probably four weeks ago now, we were looking for schools to keep emailing and we found Ohio Dominican, emailed the coach, uh, got nothing, got nothing back. And at Fort Laramie, they were holding a college fair with uh, like 40 different colleges all around Ohio. And Ohio Dominican happened to be there. So I went and the admissions counselor was there. I went up to the booth. I asked if she knew the golf coach. And she was like, yeah, I know him pretty well. So I asked her to put in a good word for me and hopefully he would email me back. Well, the next morning I got an email back from him and Three days later, we uh, scheduled a visit to go over there and went over there. And then a week, a week or two weeks later, he invited, he invited me back for another visit and then stay overnight and tailgate with the golf team. That all went really well. You know, the college it's smaller um, over by Columbus, but you know, it's, it's out of way. It's in uh, a wooded area. So, you know, it's more of like concealed. Uh, and I'm from small town and it's smaller. So it's, it's something I'm used to and I like. So it just, it fit me well talking and then talking with the coach and the golf team. Everybody just seems like they want you there. They were really inviting and just welcoming. So I had nothing to say bad about the the team or the college. Everything was good. And me and my parents, we just felt like that was the best fit for me to go play golf and then also continue academically yeah that's awesome i'm sure your parents are excited that you're within driving distance so they can come watch your tournaments and you know come over have dinner with you and maybe once in a while you'll even make it home yeah yeah mom's really excited because now i'm not three and four hours away i'm just just an hour and a half down the road Yep. Yep. That's awesome. Well, it's exciting to hear. And I saw the pictures online of your signing day and you guys had your Ohio Dominican gear on it. it uh, it's always cool to see a high school athlete move on to the next stage and, and really go for it. So congrats to you for signing and thank you Looking forward to seeing your scores and you, you compete at the collegiate level. I think it's, it's awesome. Something I've done. Uh, it's a full-time job. It'll teach you a crazy amount of responsibility and how to be a, you know, how to be a grown man, um, juggling that, you know, that coursework and being an athlete, like there's not a lot of time to do anything else. I mean, you can have some fun obviously, but you know, I think Dom can relate. He was a student athlete over Heidelberg ran track and, and juggled that course load. So there's a lot to it, but it's, it's such a rewarding thing once you get through it and you look back on it. So. Yeah. I love to hear you t- taking the initiative, you know, and your college search and you, emailing those coaches. And in this case, you know, taking the initiative to swap, talk to that admissions counselor at ODU. I think, unfortunately, a lot of times high schoolers and myself, when I was in high school, I had the exact opposite approach. Thought, well, everyone's going to contact me. Everyone's going to come to me. And unless you are, you know, a uh, top tier athlete in the entire country, you know, going to Duke, going to Kansas, Florida, Ohio State, yada, yada, Alabama, 
that's not the reality for most individuals. So it's really cool um, for you in your case that you took the initiative to reach out to ODU, had nothing but positive experiences. And yeah, we're excited for you, you know, in this next step. Um, you know, as Ryan said, the school and the athletic aspect, uh, really excited to see how that goes for you. So Bryce, we want to be respectful of your time. I know you need to get going here soon, but I do have one more question that we want to wrap up this podcast with. So on this podcast on Hometown Highlights, we have a strong emphasis on community and what that community looks like and how the community supports you and what the community means to you. You know, in your case, obviously you've spent 18 years, uh, you know, been there in the Anna area, uh, soon to be high school graduate and alumni. Obviously you're done with the golf, golf career at Anna. So can you take me through it? And again, I know we've even talked about parents a little bit, but as far as community, what does community mean to you? How has that community supported you through these first 18 years? Um, community means a lot. You know, we're a small town. Everybody knows everybody and everybody supports everybody. So it's like, it's like one big fan base, almost like a professional sport. You get that fan base always there to support you wants the best for you and like when I went to state I saw people from the community there supporting me that maybe have never been to a golf match it's in it just really made me excited that I had people there supporting me at state when during COVID when it was pretty limited. Mm. And if you go to basketball games, football games, volleyball games, you'll see a number of parents from the community that maybe their son or daughter isn't playing. They're just there to support and cheer on the Rockets. So it's a pretty big deal. And especially when our girls uh, made it to state three years ago, but then it was canceled. Um, I'd say the community was probably more bummed about it than maybe even the girls because, you know, everybody was going to go because the state doesn't happen very often. So community means everything and, and it's just, it's amazing to see the amount of support they give to their student athletes. And I thank them for that. And yeah, it, it means a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome to hear. Like you said, not only does everyone know everyone, but everyone supports everyone. And that's awesome. That obviously, you were able to be on both ends, able to receive that support those individuals and also being able to attend, you know, those different athletic events, uh, different school events in general, just to support your peers. And as you will, as the years go on, you'll come back and be that supportive alumni and be there for, you know, in the future, those uh, future rocket athletes that will be playing as well. So Bryce, thanks so much for your time. Uh, really appreciate again, coming on, appreciate you getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and just kind of talking with us and just kind of telling us your story where you have been, uh, you know, with the game of golf, but also as an individual, and we wish you nothing but the best moving forward. Thanks for having me. I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Bryce. Good seeing you again, and we'll, we'll catch you around soon. All right.